Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Mayfair Heights United Methodist Church of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We are so glad you could join us. Please join me in the call to worship. As the season of Lent begins, we are invited by a gracious and merciful God to respond to God's steadfast love, to approach in reverence and wonder, rejoicing in the invitation to holy places, to walk humbly in our disciplines, in prayer, fasting, and giving, to seek the one who grants us life.
reading from the Hebrew scriptures this morning is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 6. I offer my life to you, Lord, my God, I trust you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Your compassion and faithful love, they are forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our contemporary reading this morning comes from Mo Thomas of Mindful Christianity. Remember, every moment comes with near infinite possibility if we learn to embrace the gift of grace. Don't let the past anchor you to a story less than the one you are meant to live. Oh, my God. 
On this Sunday morning, when there is a bit of hope, we come to you, gracious God. The pipes are thawing. The snow is melting. There's warmth from the sun. Folks are getting vaccinated. The average number of cases infected dropping ever so slightly. We are feeling hopeful. Hopeful. Just as this season of Lent started with reminding us of our mortality on Ash Wednesday, we see in this time reflections of just how little control we have. We are dependent upon the weather, dependent upon the care of others, dependent upon cooperation by groups of whom we have never heard. And so we pray. We pray for those who make decisions on our behalf. We pray for those who have to think daily about disasters and unforeseen circumstances. We pray for those who plan so that we can be safe. We pray for those who think more of others and less of themselves. We pray for those who are working tirelessly on behalf of others. May they find strength, and may we find great appreciation for their hard and need this day, and for a chance to come to their assistance. O oh Lord, we pray, in the name of the one who teaches us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading from the Gospels this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what kind of week has it been for you? Has it been the kind of week where you have had to decide whether you're going to wear your nice PJs to supper or stay with your everyday ones? Or has it been the kind of week where you've looked out the window, as, as we have here, at the snow, and you think to yourself, that is so pretty, that's so beautiful, I should step outside and play around in it. And then you discover the cold. Maybe you feel like your energy is pretty low. I know some parents who feel this way, and yet their children still seem to be going quite strong. And we had a Nash Wednesday service, which was unusual, not just because we had it online, but because Ash Wednesday is a hands-on kind of time the time when we feel a cross uh, traced on our forehead and we see the ashes and we're reminded of our own mortality. It feels different to do that online. And it's not that we need any more reminders about mortality right now, either ours or others, because most of us know family or friends who have died of COVID or of its complications. It's been on our minds for over a year now, this living and dying. And it's been on the minds of others. And we've had a week of startling weather where we have thought about those who do not have a place to call home and are exposed to the weather. And while for some of us uh, it's an inconvenience to not get the car out, uh, for others this week has been very life-threatening. It has been an odd, odd week. And so we come to the first Sunday of Lent 
hearing the familiar story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And this year, the story is told to us from Mark, who startles us with his brevity. The Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness. And Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. That's it. No embellishment. And if this were the only story we knew, we would wonder what happened during that time. And I believe the gospel writer had an intentionality with that brevity. I believe the writer remembered the very nature of wilderness and temptation, that to go into the wilderness to get away from temptations only to find that they have followed us there. Because dealing with the temptations in our lives is not usually dependent upon our location. It doesn't mean we won't try it. Because all of us sometimes want a, a new start, a clean slate, a fresh beginning. But Mark is not interested in sharing many details with us about Jesus' time in the desert or in the wilderness. Other gospel writers will add on to this story, but Mark feels as if this is enough. Mark uses interesting language, at least to me. Jesus is tempted by the powers of evil, personified by the use of the name Satan. In our times, what things tempt us? One of the things I believe which tempts us is separation. Not the separation where we choose to quarantine for the sake of others, but separation where we choose to make one group of humanity superior to another. It is our compartmentalizing of ethnic and racial and economic and political and religious differences where we accentuate the differences in our culture and then we demonize the differences. We let the tempter, however we might characterize it, draw us apart from one another. It seems to me that this separation is the issue for our Lenten fast. We have fallen so easily into blame that we cannot see any good in those who are not on our side. We've allowed ourselves to be taken advantage of by folks who have little regard for the common good. Almost a year ago during Lent, Lisa Wright and I joined Jenny Markham Cluel and others from Mosaic on a mission trip to South Texas and Mexico. For most of us on that trip, we came into a world which was unfamiliar. We had no trouble with cooking the food for the refugees. Methodists can do that in their sleep. And we had no trouble with building the trail at La Posada and with doing the other projects that they needed. We can do work like that without thinking. But when we loaded those wagons full of the evening meal, wheeling them across the border into Mexico, my world was changed. To see the refugee camp with all of these wonderful, beautiful people, to feed them, to see their smiling faces, to try to communicate in a language which is not my first language. It changed my life. Now these people were not just stories on the news. They were not folks who were intent on destroying the way of life in our country. They were just hungry, scared people stuck in the tensions between two nations. Now, I don't pretend to know the stories of any of the refugees whom we met. I don't know if they were escaping violence or if they were violent themselves. My experience 
my very limited experience is that these people were looking for a new way of life. On the U.S. side, we did have a chance to talk to some of the folks at La Posada. These folks were in the midst of the asylum progress, uh, process, and they told us stories of all kinds of things. Some escaped their home countries under threat of death. Others were victims of violence. They told us of things that no human being should ever experience. And if these things had happened to Mary Sue or to Debbie or to Lisa or Frank or to anyone else in our congregation or the Mosaic congregation, we would be incensed. We would be demanding justice. We would be camped out on the steps of the law enforcement agencies waiting to talk to whoever would listen. But with the refugees and asylum seekers, we distance ourselves. We try not to hear their stories because if we do, then, well, we don't know what we would think if we heard their stories. We have enough to deal with in our own lives, right? We can't take on this changing of the world. That's what we tell ourselves. So we compartmentalize, separate ourselves based on trivial characteristics, the color of skin, birthplace, religious beliefs. We separate ourselves by where we live, our modes of transportation, by how we dress. And sometimes I tell myself that it will never be different, that it has always been that way. Kind of like the poor will be with you always. But what if? What if it was in our power to make it different? Who else can change the world if it's not us? Just because it has always been that way does not mean that it always has to be that way. We would have to make different choices, but that's the intent of this season of Lent, changing our choices so that we can follow Jesus more closely, changing our minds so that we can listen to the teachings of Jesus and change our lives. What if we closed that distance between ourselves and others? I'm not asking you to go out and chat with everyone you see. Some of us would be very uncomfortable with that. And for others of us, it would be easy. For most of us, it would be a nightmare. We can, however, change our minds, change how we think. We can consider that the stories we hear about and read about are usually just a tiny portion of the whole. They are 10 second sound bites when the whole story would take a while to hear. We listened to one gentleman at La Posada who talked to us for 45 minutes while we ate lunch. And I think that we scarcely scratched the surface of his violence, of the violence in his life. All our stories are more than the tiny bit that we let others see. All our stories are more than the tiny bit others tell about us. What if during this Lent, we let snap judgments go. What if we focused on the dignity within others? What if we saw the person in the green apron at the intersection who's selling the curbside chronicle as a person who's trying to better their life? 
that they're trying to make a home for themselves. What if we quit wondering why they are unhoused in the first place? If they want to tell us, they can. I don't need to know that to help them by buying the magazine. One small act could help. The Gospel of Mark says that Jesus was ministered to by angels. And the Greek word for ministered is the word diakonia. The word deacon comes from that. And the word deacon is servant. These angels served Jesus in his hour of need, in his 40 days of need. We also have been ministered to by angels. Some of it we might never notice. Sometimes it might be as dramatic as someone who helped uh, others out of a car in the middle of a multi-vehicle accident. Or maybe it was that high school girl who was in your youth group not that many years ago who's now an Oklahoma City firefighter who has braved frigid temperatures this week to help those in need and who always puts themselves on the line. I would never have thought that about her in high school, but I was wrong. Or it might have been someone who helped clean the house or put away the dishes, loaded the dishwasher again, and maybe even again. Or it might have been an angel who took someone to a doctor's appointment or stayed with their spouse for a few hours so that errands could be run or groceries gathered or gave them time to just breathe for a bit. It could be an angel who helped someone get their car fixed or brought a meal or paid the rent or listened and then listened some more or who gave you the phone number of a safe place or gave you clean clothes or prayed for you or held your hand we live in a world which can use more angels. This Lent, take care of someone. I trust that God will lead you to them and them to you. For this is the Spirit of God in our midst. Amen.